Today, we are talking about how to make customers and how to keep customers. So hopefully, you pick out a thing or two, maybe you'll learn three things, and uh, either way, come waste some time with me on WCR Nation. What's going on everybody? Jersey here from Window Cleaning Resource and you are here. What's up? This is WCR Nation, the podcast for window cleaning, pressure washing, everything service related. So welcome. Um, I got a lot of shout outs to do today, but I want to put out first and foremost, uh, if it's your first time here checking it out, Thanks. Hopefully you like it, or at least it's halfway decent. Go back and watch all the other ones. Binge out and tell me that you binged on the episodes, or even put it on Facebook, any of the groups. It's always appreciated. Uh, I love hearing uh, guys be like, oh man, I spent 10 hours on Saturday in the yard listening. It's super cool. So thank you guys for checking it out. And if you are one of the loyal nation, one of the cool kids and you're somebody who orders your supplies through me at Window Cleaning Resource, what's going on? It is because of you that, as I was told yesterday, I get to buy name brand Windex. So thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) By the way, I didn't think that would ever take off the whole uh, name brand stuff and things. People always send me stuff like, man, now you can get that corn dog. Now you can get that. It's pretty cool. Name brand spaghetti was one. Never even thought about that, but... Going to get some Bertelli or whatever the fancy stuff is. But thank you guys, really. And if you want to buy your supplies through me, that would be like the most ultimate awesomeness ever. My number direct is 862-312-2026. That's 862-312-2026. And yes, it's a sell. Text me, call me, whatever you want. Uh, Put everything in your cart, even. Text me, be like, yo, Jersey. Everything is in my cart. Go ahead and put that in. And uh, I get credit. You pay no extra and like super duper high five. And maybe you even get a shout out, which means absolutely nothing. Nothing, but uh, it's kind of cool. Anyway, going on to shout outs. Scott Robinson, what's up, man? Uh, Dennis Kirkpatrick for the craft beer, by the way. Another one of uh, the people who uh, let me know what kind of fancy things I can buy. Uh, Big squeegee, what's going on? Of course. Uh, and I forgot to say thanks to Dave the Window Licker. I think last time, Dave always is everywhere and uh, super awesome. Thank you for always watching. Nathan Young and, of course, Zach Estep. Estep? Estep. Man, I put your names. Anyway, thanks, uh, thanks guys. And it, like I said, if you want to buy from me, that would be totally awesome. Well, this week, we got our show idea from somebody last week, which was Hugo Vargas. Uh, Hugo said to do a show on make them and keep them, and that's just what we're doing. So if you have a show idea, put it in the comments there on YouTube. That is where the conversation is. Make sure to thumbs up if you're on YouTube. Of course, sup- subscribe to the channel because that's the thing you're supposed to do. But either way, it's awesome. Um, so yeah, this week we're talking about making them and keeping them. And sometimes, obviously we understand the whole, like, this is what you do to advertise. This is set a postcard out. You know, do all that kind of stuff. But the actual act of getting them is something that we could dive a little bit more into and kind of talk about. And these, again, I'm just some dude with a microphone and a computer. So take it with a grain of salt, whatever I say. Um, I don't know any more than you. Just bringing up some cool ideas. Um, The big thing to remember about when you're making a customer is you have to make them comfortable. First off, they got to get in the door. So they got to find your website. They got to find you SEO'd well or your postcard or your flyer, your door hanger, your whatever. Let's assume they're here, they've come to you, and now you are going to get them, right? You're going to have them as a customer. You know that you're the best person for the job. You know your company is the best. If you don't, that's why you're not selling because you're not sold on yourself, by the way. Uh, Make a t-shirt out of that, but... Um, you have to be sold on yourself. You know you're the best person for the job. You have to be able to convey that. Here's the, here's what I always say. If you saw you're in the middle of a crowd and this little kid just takes off and he's running, he's just about to get into this busy street, you would push everybody over to you to save this little kid, right? You knew nothing in your bones other than that is the only and best decision to make right there. You would do anything you could to stop that from happening. That's how sales are. If you know with deep down, 
You know in your bones, in your soul that you are the best company. You're the best guy for the job. You are absolutely the greatest and best decision when somebody's looking for window cleaning or pressure washing, then it's an easy sell. You'll do anything to get to that. It's easy when you're explaining something that you know is fact. So you got to get over that first and foremost. But the big part about the sale and getting them is that talking isn't closing. Closing is closing. A sale is only made when somebody finally says yes. Like they'll come to you and they'll say, hey, I got questions. I'm looking for an estimate. Maybe they're even saying, hey, I want to book an appointment. But up until it's actually done, you're still trying to work that angle to make sure that they choose you. And that's kind of the part that some people fail on. They'll say, uh, well, here's the stuff. Uh, is it something we could do? You know, can we do it? You know, is it, you know, and, then, and that's where they're nervous. And that's the part that's hard, especially if you are introverted uh, and you're not outgoing or babbly like me. It's very hard sometimes to convey yourself to people. That's part of it that you have to work on. I can't tell you personally how to be more communicative communicative, or talk more or be more open or anything. That's for you. One quick thing on that is if you haven't read a book on sales, do that. Go read a book on sales because we're not selling. Selling is just explaining stuff, right? Selling is closing. When somebody says, you've explained it so well, I know just like you know, it's the best decision for me, let's do it. That's the close. But the sale is how to convey the information to somebody so that they can absorb it. Sometimes when people just talk about themselves, you know, we always talk about USPs. People will be like, oh, what's USP? Best, what's your USP? Your unique selling point. Why does Miss Jones choose you? And they go, well, I, I mean, you know, we uh, we, are, we have logoed shirts, you know, and um, we're really friendly. Yeah, so is everybody. Like, you're not sold on yourself on why they're choosing you. You're just looking at one thing, you know, one part of it, one little itty bitty thing. Why do you buy groceries from the grocery store? Whichever one you go to, they all sell the same groceries. Maybe some of them has a more bigger selection. The main stuff you could still get there, but maybe there's a bigger selection. Maybe it's closer to your house. Maybe the uh, prices are better. Whatever your focus is, that's what your focus should be on you. Why does somebody buy you? Right? So getting somebody in the door and helping convey the message is really the hard part. Read a book. Um, one that I don't read. Uh, it's a great book, but don't, don't do it exactly how he does his Grant Cardone's book. Um, it is, uh, man, I had it just sitting out. Uh, a Closer's Guide. There it is. Closer's Survival Guide by Grant Cardone. One of the greatest books. Don't do it like him. He's super high pressure. I don't like high pressure. If you've talked to me for wood stuff, I hate high pressure. I hate it. But it's pretty good to see how he gets. So somebody has an objection or they have a, an objection is a question because you haven't fully explained what the products are. Um, if somebody has an objection, they're asking a question. If you can't read the question... You just see it as them saying no, when nobody really says no until they say no. So pretty cool. Read it. I, if you're not a book guy, get it on um, uh, like an Audible or, or audio version. Uh, it's pretty good. You, you'll actually get a lot out of it. Don't do the high pressure thing, but but get a lot out of it. But closing is the sale. And how do you get them to actually say, yes, you know what? Let's do it. I want to I want to I want to do it. I want to choose you. I agree with everything you're saying. Let's do it. First off, giving a quote over the phone is how you start. Now, a lot of us have the 20 window special. It's just for people to gauge. There's a lot of tire kickers. If you have a 20 window special, which the special is always going, you may change that. But if you have a 20 window special, then um, you always get somebody who's a tire kicker or a price shopper to see the price right away. If they're serious, they'll call you. If they're not, they don't. You don't waste your time. But a 20 window special is something along this lines. Uh, 20 windows outside only 149. 20 windows inside and outside 199. Now, pricing is all different. Some people are more inclusive. That for us was kind of our 20 window special. We worked off of that. If you wanted to add screen cleaning, that's extra. If you wanted to add um, uh, deep sill cleaning or something like that, you certainly could too. But we brought over all the options for the window cleaning on that before anybody said yes. There's nothing worse than a bait and switch, by the way. Um, especially to lose trust in people. Everybody's had that carpet cleaner, you know. Three rooms for $25. You're like, what? How do they get? They show up and all of a sudden it's a $475 bill, right? Um, 
So don't bait and switch. But having that gets those tire kickers. But for everything else, if somebody has a project and they say, hey, I got 20 windows. Or I got windows, but I don't think I'm going to fall in your 20 window special. I always say, yeah, you know, uh, let me take a look at it. As soon as I'll pull it up, because I'll do Google Maps and Bing Maps, you know, get bird's eye views and things like that, is I'll always be like, wow, yeah, for a house like yours, I'm glad that you let me know because I really needed to look at this in person. You know, those other ones are more cookie cutter because people are very proud of their houses. And that is a big part to get people to, if somebody says, I don't think I'm going to fall into your 21 special, they're not. Because in their brain, if they do, their house is just like everybody else's. That's what they're really saying. My house is different. I spent a lot of time doing and building and making and buying and making my house my own. My house is not like anybody else's. You're absolutely right. It's not. It is going to be a little bit more, but you know that because your house is just kind of on a different caliber. Um, And we let people know that. People are very unhappy paying what they think everybody else is paying if they feel like what they have is something special. Sometimes, again, you're just reading kind of the, the story on this. So... Once you look at them, I say, well, great. I can get you an estimate right over the phone. All I need is a couple of questions for you uh, on that. So first off, spell your first and last name for me. They spell it. And of course, your address. You know, there's your address. And then if we get disconnected, what's a good phone number to call you back at? Get the phone number. Oh, and uh, we'll send this whole quote over to your email uh, when we're done. What, what's that email? But I have all that. And then I say, one last question for you. Uh, how'd you hear of us? I got those questions that took all of 30 seconds to kind of just get them comfortable. They knew that they were giving this. You need the address. They want to tell you where they saw you. It's awesome. You ask every single person where they saw you, and that's how you track it. And then after that, I'll, okay, give me one second. Let me take a peek here. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, that house is awesome. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Oh, yeah, look at the back. I'm always telling people, people are very proud. That's the most expensive thing people own. So you're telling them all the cool things you see, and they go, wow, you can see all that? Yeah, 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 technology, as scary as it is, it's a wonderful thing for me. That's what I always say. Yeah, okay, can you see me waving? No, no, these are just old pictures, but, uh, you know, kind of gives me a gist of it. Well, let me ask you a question. On your windows, do they slide up and down? Obviously, I could see on the thing, but I'm going to ask those questions based on what I can see. But by what I see, it looks like your windows are the kind that slide up and down. They're called double hungs. Yep, yep, that's right. Now, is there, when you open a window on a nice day, is it go right to the screen or is there another pane? If you're in an area with storms, that's how I word storm windows. Uh, they go, oh, uh, no, you got to open the window and then there's another pane you slide up and you can keep that up during the summer. Yeah, okay, great. So you have what's called a triple track storm. That's how I'm getting all this down and pricing is all based on that. But after I got all that, I've already raked the information. So even no matter what happens from here, I can do follow-ups. I can shoot them emails. I can put them in all of that information, get it off to them and continue to help them understand that, that we're the best window cleaning company for them. But after all that, I'm going to give them a quote, right? Once that's all said and done, this is how I give the quote. Okay, by the looks of what it's cleaning, for us to clean the windows, the price would be $349. And that's just for us to clean the windows and wipe down the sills. If you want us to do um, the screen cleaning, um, that is uh, an extra $3 per window. Not a lot of people have us do screens, but some people don't want them done. That's why it's not in the initial price. If you want us to do any deep cleaning because you have some really gnarly uh, sills, we'll do that with a toothbrush and vacuum, uh, and that's an extra $2, blah, blah, blah. Let them all know. Uh, Which version did you want to go with? I didn't ask, oh, does that sound good? I didn't ask, you know, it's called the assumptive close, but basically they called you, you've given them the price, they've given you the quote, they've given all the, well, you know what? I think we'll be good with just the windows. Okay, great. Well, when we're on site, if you need to add a couple screens here or there, just let us know in our text. Same price applies once we get there. Great. Okay. Which date works best for you? Tuesday the 5th at 1 o'clock or Wednesday the 6th at 9? I'm always going to give them two dates because they're going to pick one of those two. If I say... Um, Okay, so does Tuesday at one work? No, no, that doesn't work. I'm going to spend a bunch of time finding dates and then, oh, you know what? Let me check my calendar. I'm going to get back to you. I want to get them in the books because once they're in the books, they are signed. It is done. You have closed. Once you close that job, all the work, all the money, all the everything you spent to get those people to come find you, they figured it out and they realize you're the best window cleaning company for them. And now you're going to be able to show them, but you got to get them in the books. Once they're in the books, that's how I word all of that, right? 
Um, once they're in, okay, great. So we have you down, Miss Jones, uh, for Tuesday the 5th at 1 o'clock. We'll be there usually between 12 and 1, just so you know, um, depending on the job before is usually how I word it. Uh, if there's any specifics, I'll let them know if we're doing just outside. Okay, and then before we get there, just make sure to have all those screens taken down so we can get right to work. And yes, I water feed. I love water fed. Water fed is amazing. And uh, people always say, well, what do you do about screens? I ask them to take them down. You're the professional. I've done that and that wordage in, for probably 10 years. And um, I've never once had anybody say, "I, why, why would I take the screens down? They just... Okay, go ahead and take the screens down. They go, oh, yeah, i got to take the screens down for you to clean the windows. Okay, great. Just take them down the day before, and then it'll be ready for us when we're there, and we do it. If there, anybody's, there's always that one weird closet window every now and then that somebody leaves on there. When I get done, I, I'll let you know. We kind of give the call and let them know, but that's how I word it. Um, after everything booked, they go, okay, great, sounds good. Oh, one more thing. So I just want to let you know that we do also offer gutter cleaning. And house washing. Now, if you decide that your house is gnarly, dirty, whatever, you want to get that washed, we actually do that before the windows so that when we're all done, the windows are spot free, the house is clean, and we're out of there. If you want to do gutters, we, of course, have ladders there on all of our trucks, so we can actually take care of that, too. Are either of those uh, an issue for you? Well, the job's already done. They don't need to think about anything on that job. It's already booked. So even if they go, ah, man, I, let me go look at the house. I'll have to let you know on that. The job's already booked. If you wait and package it all together and they decide to wait, now you're not going to close right there because they need to then figure it all out. You give them too many choices, you're going to end up ruining the deal because there's too much for them to think about and they'll need more time to think. So that's how I word it. Usually what happens, people go, oh, wow. Um, and I always say, as they're thinking, because now they're like looking at their house in their head, I say, and remember, if you do add any other service on, we take 10% off the service because we're already there. Like, oh, wow, yeah, okay, nice, nice. What's, what would it cost for my house for a house wash? Oh, just to know, it would normally be, you know, $2.99, but because we're there, if you said the 10% or you dropped it, you're already on site. You're making the windows clean easier. If you discount or not, it just sounds better, in my opinion. You're not really losing money because you're simplifying the rest of the job. Oh, uh, you know, it's two forty or it's two ninety nine. But you know, if you do book that together, then uh, we can actually do it for two forty nine, or we'll take ten percent off, or whatever your 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 wording is, because we're already there. Is what I say. Great, yeah, um, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, great. So we're still gonna be there at the same time. We'll just have to be a little bit longer. You know, blah blah blah. Now I've upsold before I've even gotten to the job. When you get to the job, you have another option to upsell after on the after call, but. You're getting it all out there. You're letting them know. And I don't bombard them with everything that I do right away. I always offer gutter cleaning and house washing. Yes, we also do roof cleaning and concrete cleaning. We do interior garage cleaning for the floors with a uh, um, reclaim system. Gosh. You know, we do a lot of other things that are close to that. But I don't bring it up because, again, you don't want to overwhelm them. It's like people who do uh, wraps on their car and they put every service that they offer on there. And it's... It's like a dictionary in the side of the car. No one's reading that, man. Just like you're confusing people if you list off 30 things. But anyway, there we are. The job is booked. It is in the books. Even if they're thinking about the other services, the window job is booked, right? Now that we have them, they've done, we've gotten to the job, we've given the spiel, we've done the work, we've blown them away by how awesome we are and how awesome our staff is and how we don't smell like BO or cigarettes and we have uniforms and everything else that you think is your USP. Keep going with that, making yourself awesome. You're giving a great impression when you guys are on site or if you're on site, right? You've done all that. But how do you keep them? How do you leave them with an overabundance of awesome? Like, if you do a great job and you leave promptly and everything went good, they go, well, that was really good. An hour later, they don't even know your name or that you were there because they were only in the, in the moment, right? The big thing is you've all had products where you've gone to, you've bought, you've used, and they went above and beyond. And you're like, man, I can't. I got this thing, but then, you know, the package that came in was awesome. I bought belts. Listen, this is... This is, sounds stupid, but they're clicky belts, and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of like the other kind of... I'm just going to buy these belts. $100 for two belts, these things. $100. Stupid. It came in a case that was foam lined. They were inserted like a gun case. Like you slid it open, these belts. Like the whole thing 
was like amazing. This is why when you buy Apple products, like them or, or hate them, when you buy an Apple product, there's as much thought that goes into the packaging and the wrappers and the uh, look and the heaviness to the box as the product because the whole thing is an experience, not just the cleaning. Same thing with this. That's why you have to kind of go above and beyond. You know, by the way, think about this when you get the next Apple product. Every single thing that's in there has a peel. You have to take it like the, the charger block is covered in plastic. Oh, so it doesn't get scratched. Really? You think that by them putting that, I've never had one scuffed and I throw it in bags and boxes and I've never had it. What it is, is when you get the product, you get to satisfyingly peel. Even the block, you get to undo that thing. There's no twisty tie, twisty tie on the on the wires. That, that there's that like cap where you pull it and it opens up. It's that satisfying feeling of the experience of having this product. Do the same thing in your company. Um, but now you're to the point of keeping them. The first thing you should do after everything is said and done, of course, at the job, you want to have your satisfaction form. Make sure you go around with the customer. Show them anything that became issues, even if they're not issues, because if you point out the little stuff, they assume that you've pointed everything out, which you have. Don't be dishonest, obviously. But uh, I'll go through things and say, hey, you know, while we were cleaning this, just so you know, it looks like the sealer's coming off a little bit off of the siding by that one window. We don't do that, but I just wanted to bring it up. People are like, wow. Okay, cool. Wow, you really paid attention. Huh. Or they say, oh yeah, I knew about that, right? You want to show them you're more than just the guy that got the bird poop off the window, right? So after all that said and done, the next day, if you have an office staff, this should always be the thing they do in the morning. If you do uh, your own in the field and office, you should do this call uh, at night when you're doing office things. But here's what you do is the day before, all those people you put into the next day, and you call up and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, this is Jersey from XYZ. Uh, we were out there la yesterday at about 9 in the morning, and I just wanted to call see how everything turned out. Now you've had a chance to see the sun in every different direction. How did everything look? Oh, my gosh, yeah, it looks so great. I'm so happy. It looks so good. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Those guys are so nice. It's so great to hear. I really, really do appreciate that. Now, um, if there's anything else we can do for you as far as the other services that they uh, showed you about, uh, are there any questions on that? Um, they go, cause when you're there at the job, you're going to bid them for everything. And that's part of it. You're going to give it right. So they have prices on everything. And that sheet comes back. Those are the carbonless copies. Like, Oh yeah, no, I looked over that. I think we're good for now. Okay, great. Well, we're going to keep that on file until your next window cleaning. So if it is something you want to do next time, just let us know. And we'll have those prices. We hold them for six months. And speaking of, did you want to set your next appointment for window cleaning in three months? Or did you want to wait all the way to six months? Look, look what I just did there. After everything was done, the segue happened for, we're keeping this paper. Oh, and by the way, like I forgot to ask you, like it's assumed you're going to. It Everybody does this. I just didn't ask you yet. Um, sorry I waited so long, but when's your next appointment? I didn't give you, hey, uh, did you want to do it uh, next year or two years from now? How about six years? Did you want to call me randomly out of the blue in six years and say you just forgot? No. Did you want to do it in three months? Or did you want to wait all the way to six months? Right there in your brain, people will go, oh, even if they want to do six months, they're going, yeah, that's a, I, that's a long time, but I'm going to have to wait the six months. They feel bad then. Not feel bad. That, that's bad. But they, they feel like that is a really long time, six months. Yeah, six months. I'll have to wait the six months. So spring and fall, no, I completely understand. Spring and fall are usually our busiest seasons anyway. That's how I'll word it. So we have an appointment now in October 12th. It's going to be the same time as you had last time at uh, 1 o'clock between 12 and 1. How does that work for you? Probably still good? Assumptive. They're looking. Now it's already in the books, right? What I'm going to do with extended ones is I'm always going to call them the day before or on the Monday and say, hey, this is Jersey from XYZ. I'm just giving you a shout. We have you down for Thursday at uh, between 12 and 1. I just wanted to give you a quick shout and see if you had a chance to look over the sheet from last time on any of their services or did you just want to go with window cleaning, right? You're never asking, do you not want to do it? Are you sure you still want to do it? Because then it's a yes or no question. If you give somebody a yes or no question, there's always a 50% chance it can say no. No means it's done. No is an ender. Okay, It's the same thing when you're in route and you hand them the sheet. You don't go in there and say, hey, my name is Jersey from XYZ. Can we give you a bid on your windows? 
That's a yes or no question. 50% of the chance, 50% chance you're going to get a no, which ends everything. Instead, you hand them the sheet. Hey, uh, here's all the prices. Um, how do those prices look? I'm not, yes or no, that's not, you can't, nobody's going to go above and beyond to say the word no when it's not a yes or no question. You know, it's very uh, difficult for them to get their brain around because now they're on a different track of how you think. Same thing in how you're doing this. So now after this is done, the day after, which I always ask the job too, did you want to book a next appointment right away or whatever? But the day after, if you put that in there, you're going to get 80 plus percent of those people booking three months or six months down the road. Very seldom does somebody say, hey, you know, six months even seems a little bit, because you've already said, or do you want to wait all the way to six months? People are always like, ah, six months, that seems a little bit farther out. I'm going to have to just give you a call. That happens. But then I say, oh, hey, not a problem. I'll call you in three months and uh, we'll try to go over calendar then or whatever. I'm going to put that in and I'm going to follow up because I want to have them back. I'm not just going to do the work and go, high five, call me when you need me. What? Why did you work so hard to get those people for it just to lay out there in limbo? Follow up is key. If you make that call the next day better, you will book more work in that one 30 minutes of calling than you will the rest of the day. Truth be told, try it. It will blow you away, I'm telling you. So after that's all said and done, you got them in there. Sometimes people say, you know, they're not putting that out there. Like I said, you're really talking about that 80% um, somewhere in there. A lot of other times people say they're going to think or I, I might be moving or I we got the... Cool. Absolutely. I completely understand. What you're going to do is you're still going to do your spring and fall calls, right? Those you can decide yourself if you want to do them to everybody just to catch up or if you're going to check people to see if they're not in the appointment and that's how I word them. That's how I do it. What I do is we have our office goddess who I've talked about quite a bit, but we have that list and we go over our schedule and if, uh, you know, uh, Jim Smith is on there, I look up Jim Smith, I type him into the uh, calendar program, hey, he's not on there, I'll call him, hey Jim, uh, this is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. Slow that part down so they can hear you. Um, I'm just giving you a call. We're putting together our spring schedule, and I don't see you on the list. Uh, I'd love to get you on. Is there a date uh, of week that would work good for you? Anything like that? Well, all of a sudden, it brings it back in Jim's mind. Everything comes rushing back. Oh, yeah, I use these guys. Yeah, it's spring. Yeah, looking at the windows. Oh, they look dirty. Like, you're reminding them. Because it's your job to remind somebody about window cleaning. It's not their job to then remind you to come clean them. It's the same thing in the window cleaning supply business. We do calls twice a year. And the reason is, is because it's our job to remember you, to help you remember you need supplies and the time of year and to get them ordered than it is for you to have to worry about, oh, that's right, I need some stuff. I got to find the number and give them a call. And that's why we do it. It just reminds people, putting it in their head. It's the same reason you see a McDonald's billboard magazine, uh, television ad, radio. It's everywhere. McDonald's is everywhere, but you still know who they are. They're just reminding you that they exist. So do that call list. You will book a ton of work from that call list. I'm telling you, it is a huge boost. Do it before spring and before fall because you're going to be planning for that. Um, Another real good way to stay in contact with people is to print up your list of all your customers and send them a four by six postcard every month, every two months, whatever it ends up being. Don't wait so long that in between that time they can find somebody else or forget about you. You want to stay relevant. That's how you keep them. That's how you keep these people. I send out a four by six postcard to every one of our customers and usually what it is, is a card with a picture on the front, just a picture of one of the services that we do in the middle of doing it or some kind of funny card or something. I got, uh, you know, funny one for gutters or whatever. And I'm sending it out prior to that season. So if it's going to be spring, I send them out, of course, before spring, before fall. I have one before winter and I have one before um uh, before winter, before spring, before summer. And each of them is tailored to kind of different ones. And then in between that, I have gutter cleaning. I do house washing. I do one for concrete and uh, some rock work and stonework walls and things like that. You send those out and all it is is something, yes, people will throw them away, but they're super cheap. It keeps you relevant. They see that services and they're still going to forget that you do those services. But I'm telling you, every time we do one of those, People will call us and we'll get a good ROI because those people already know you. 
You're just reiterating the fact you do other services. It's great. It's just really, really, this is the cost of keeping them because the cost to get them is so much more. So send out a four by six postcard, do a call list twice a year. And remember in the beginning, we got everyone's email. So what I do is we put those into the constant contact for the emails and how I word that on the emails is when they give us the email, okay, great, we're gonna make sure to send you out this quote uh, when we're done so you have it for your records and then you'll get uh, all the fun stuff from us with coupons and things for you, right? That's They can cancel any time, look at the laws for uh, emails, but technically blah, 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 I'm not gonna get into logistics. But you have everybody's email. Everybody who you've done service, we have two lists, done service and a new customer. And we get those from our response a bit, which is amazing by the way. But we also get those when we do quotes. And then when we already have somebody, somebody I've given the quote over the phone. And I'm talking fast, I'm sorry, I'm trying to slow down. A lot of information I'm trying to put out there. But uh, w- once we do the work for somebody, we already have that information. So we put them into, we do work for. And then it's different ones like, hey, it's coming up. You're going to have to get your windows done again or whatever. We're going to send those emails out. You can send emails out more frequently uh, because it's free. You don't want to spam people, right? Don't send them out all the time. But yet that still works. There's a lot of them. The thing with email is, is that emails don't necessarily upset people unless you're really, really plain with them like harbor freight or a rockler tool or some of those other companies you get one you know every three days or three days three times a week or something but the rest of the stuff if they don't want it they'll just delete it they don't even have to look at it it's junk mail in your email right but getting that out there if your title is catchy you're gonna get people to open it and if you get people to open it you're getting eyes that's what you're doing and it's free people email is free That's how you keep them. Keep sending that out. So now you're doing the call list, four by six, and your email, and you've done your day after follow-up with your reschedule. You're absolutely on the way to just crushing it uh, in your keeping customers. The biggest thing that happens in business, look at yourself. Stand back. Look at yourself. I see a lot of other companies, and here's the number one reason people are not making more money is because their follow-up and their keep them, keep them side of things sucks. There's so many people out there who you ask about, oh man, I haven't advertised in forever. That's cool. If you're if you're full, you're full. But there's other people out there who go, man, I, I advertise a ton. It's starting to ring. Phone's starting to ring. That's not active. You know, if you were active, you wouldn't have to do as much advertising. Or when you did, it would just be the frosting, you know, the icing on the cake because you're already killing it with everything else. Your follow-ups and your keeping them needs to be on par with the getting them. Because you are going to get people at a seventh of the cost. It costs you, look at the statistics, it could be even different for who you're talking to. But it costs you next to nothing to keep people happy than to get new people. It takes a lot to get people happy. You have to send a mailer three times before a lot of them even pay attention. They have to see a mailer, read your website, look at good reviews, and talk to their friend before they call you. You have to be convinced that you're the best option. Once you've already convinced them, that's the hard part. Trust is the hard part. Once you have the trust, all you need to do is remind them you're there and remind them to get service done, and you're going to be killing it this year. Killing it. So spend some time doing that. Keep them just as much as you make them. So either way, that's your show. Like I said, if it's your first time watching, hopefully it didn't suck too bad. Hopefully I didn't talk too fast. Go back, watch everything. But most importantly, if you're watching or listening, please order your supplies through me. Window cleaning and pressure washing supplies. That's what I do. That's how I make my cheddar. So do it. Little orders, big orders. I'm not looking for every time you buy a pure water system. Please call me. But... Every time you do any order, that's what I'm here for. It is never a bother. I do that every day, all day, literally uh, dozens of orders. And that's just because that's what I do. So you have an order, even if you forget about it, like, oh man, call up, hey, Jersey, I just need a pack of rubbers real quick. Uh, That's it. Perfect. Sweet. Let's get you done. Boom. Got a card on file. Here you go. Thank you so much for letting me put that order in. Little orders, big orders, it really doesn't matter. So I've beaten that horse. There you go. Call me. 862. 312-2026. Call or text me in that number. Uh, Put it in your cart. Text me. Tell me it's there. 
This week, if you do call me or text me and you want to put an order in, get your 5% off with me by using the code keep them. You say keep them, you get 5% off your order. It's just that simple. Uh, but it has to be ordered through me. Don't call Alex or call the main line or put the order in and go, hey, I didn't get that price. Up. No, of course you didn't. You have to order it through me. If you don't order it through me, we'll hit you next time because you don't get the discount. Like, that's just not how it works. It just We can't go and back and retrofit. So anyway, there you go. That's this week's episode. Go out there and take that, what I've said. Try to implement it. Re-listen to the episode if need be. I'm telling you, you're going to kill it. If you're not already, you can do even better than you are right now. So go out there, do everything you can to keep them as much as you make them, and be epic.